Welcome back game developers. Today we are going to be making a realistic crouch tutorial for your first or third person character. In my case it will be a first person character and by the end of the tutorial it will look something like this. I won't hold up too much of your time so let's get right into it. But first, before we do, it would mean a lot if you could like, subscribe, and comment more tutorials you would like to see in the future. Also I just posted my very own devlog series on this channel last week and it would mean a ton if you guys could check it out. Alright, now let's get right into the tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go into our first person character and actually go to hold on we want to go to our character movement component and we want to make sure that our ken crouch is checked to be true um because if that is false then we actually can't crouch at all um additionally if you go to just crouch you can change your max walk speed for crouched for example mine is at 100 um and if you want to make it so your crouched height is a different height you can change it from 40 centimeters to whatever you would like but i'm going to keep mine at 40 centimeters and change my max walk speed to um or for crouching to be 100 centimeters per second after this we're going to want to make sure that we actually set a new input action so we can actually crouch so let's go navigate to our first person folder to our input and then actions and then what we could do is duplicate ia underscore flashlight or any of these and call it ia underscore crouch we can save that go back to our input and then go into our input mapping context once we open this up we can minimize these add a new mapping context and we're going to use it or um, call the crouch one and we're going to change the button being used to be the C key for this tutorial but um, you can change it to whatever key you would like to use for your crouching in your game you make it shift or whatever you would like we can then close this and then we can go into um, our actual event graph and start calling these functions or call the input action at least so let's um, first off, let's actually just highlight some of these from our past tutorials and let's just make it so it's a little bit more readable. So let's just call this, um, flashlight logic, um, settings menu logic, interact logic, and hopefully that doesn't take it from the top. Nice. Um, and then for now damage logic but we will be making a new tutorial for this very soon all right so let's also just change the color really quickly i'm just going to change this really fast to all be the same color so it's all organized great so now what we want to do is we want to go and call our enhanced um or actually just ia underscore crouch and get the enhanced input action. Great, let's move it to a place right here. That looks good. And off of started, we want to call crouch, the function already pre-built in from Unreal Engine. And then from completed, we can call uncrouch. Great, so now we have both of these um, and that's basically what we need for our crouch in terms of inside of our first person character. So we can just call this crouch logic and we will probably be ending um, or probably be adding on to this later in our series. But for now, this uh, seems pretty good. So we can compile and save. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually import our animations that we're going to be using. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to be using these MCO mocap basic animations. Um, if you want to find these, they're free in the uh, marketplace. You could just look up mocap online and go to their um, page. Once you go to their page, you can go to filter it to be all free. And then this is the one that we're using, the only free option. Um, what we want to do is we want to add it to project. And then we want to go to the specific project you're using. Mine is true first person tut. So I'll add to project. Um, obviously yours would be something different. And then what you want to do is you want to then go and navigate to it. Once it um, loads in, it could take a second or two. And so mine's already added. So what I'll do is I'll go to my mocap basics animation mobility pro and in place and as you can see these two animations are for crouching so what we want to do is we want to right click on these animations go to retarget animation assets duplicate and retarget animations because as you can see these are the ue4 skeleton and we need these to be ue5 skeleton in order to actually use the animations with our character so we can change this none in the ik retargeter to be ue4 many to ue5 many 
And what this will do is it'll basically change all of these skeletal uh, positions and make it so it's compatible with the new skeletal mesh that we're using with the UE5 Mani. So what we'll do is we will retarget this, but before we do, we can change this, make a new folder in the first person. So let's make a new folder and let's just call this animations. And so we'll add these new retargeted animations to these animations folder and we will retarget. Great, so now they're retargeted. So we can save all of this and save all. And we're gonna wanna actually go into our um, BP underscore first person character again, and go to the specific anim class that you're using. In my case, I'm using Quinn, but since Quinn is actually a child of Manny, um, we actually wanna go to Manny in this case. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go off of, um, or find your event graph, and then you want to go off of your event blueprint update animation and find this sequence here. If you have a different um, animation blueprint, it might look a little different and you'll maybe have to do something different, but you basically just wanna go off of your event blueprint update uh, animation. And if you have a sequence like this, it's very easy. You just wanna go off of this, create a new then. Um, and right here, we're going to be creating a logic or creating logic to get this is falling, but instead make it is crouching. So here's what we'll do. We will go and get our movement component. Oops, spelled that wrong. Movement component. So we'll get our movement component. We'll get is crouching, similarly to the is falling. And then off of this, we're going to promote this to a variable and rename it is crouching. Perfect. So we can move this down a little bit, press C so we can comment while uh, dragged over it. And let's do set is crouching from the movement components crouching state so that it matches with the one above. And we can change this, make it all match up. Great. And then we can just hover over it, press Q to make them all line up evenly like so. Great, so let's move it down, move this up, and then we can go straight to this then, make a reroute node so it looks a little bit cleaner. And yeah, so that's all we really need for the um, event graph. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is go into our anim graphs, go to our locomotion state. And I know if you haven't been in the animation blueprint before, this might look like a lot, but just follow me here. All of this stuff is not really what we're looking for right now. We're mainly looking for the locomotion state because this is where the movement is handled. So we have idle and we have walk slash run. The new state we need to create is the crouching state. So what we'll do is we can right click anywhere in a blank spot, press add state, and let's call it crouch. Once we add this, we can add transitions, which is how animations basically communicate with one another. So they know if they can um, use one animation over another. So let's add a transition by dragging the left click and going to the crouch and then going doing that conversely back to idle. We could do the exact same thing like so and drag them like so. And what we'll do is if you click on this idle to crouch, we can double click it. And this is how basically we communicate when to go to one animation over another. So when we're going from idle to crouch, we need to make sure is crouching is true. So we can just get is crouching, basically meaning if is crouching is true, then we can go from one to another. And you might see a few of these danger symbols. Don't worry, we will fix them up right now. So let's go to this one and we want to do the opposite. So we wanna do the not bool and we want to get is crouching, basically insinuating if is crouching is false. Um, we want to be going back from crouching to idle, basically saying if it's not crouching. Um, the same is true here. So if crouching is true, so git is crouching, you can compile and save. And then lastly, not bool, and then git is crouching. Great, so now we have all of our transitions figured out and that's why it compiles correctly. Now, what we're gonna wanna do is actually double click on our crouch state and do the logic to make it so we're actually crouching. However, first, before we do that, we wanna actually go back to locomotion, click on each of these transition little states right here. So we can click on this one first and change this in blend settings, there's a duration. We wanna change that from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5. We're gonna do that for each of them because if it's 0 0.2, it's really snappy and it's not very realistic how we want our character to look. So we'll change each of the blend 
uh, duration to 0.5 because you don't really go from idle to crouching like like immediately. You There's usually a little bit of a duration between. Great, so now we set that up so it's a little bit more realistic. Let's go into our crouching now finally. And let's find our two animations that we retargeted earlier. So if we go into first person animations, we can left click and uh, hold control on both of these and then drag them into our animation like so. So now we have the idle and I guess the other one didn't go. I can just move it like so. And now we have both. So what we want to do is we want to basically make it so when a certain state is true, we're moving forward. And when a certain state is false, we're idle. So the way to do that is actually to do um, this one node called blend pose by bool. Blend poses by bool. So when this is true, we will be moving forward. And when this is false, we will be idle. Um, what differentiates this, what uh, actually is the Boolean that can tell us when we do one or another is the built-in one should move with the many um, animation blueprint. This Boolean will tell us whether we should move or not. It's already set up from Unreal Engine developers. So we can use this one in my case. Um, additionally, if you want to make it as realistic as possible, you should change the blend time. Um, instead of from 0 0.1, we should do something more realistic like 0 0.35, because if we are idle, it's kind of unrealistic to immediately jump to um, walking forward, it usually takes a little bit of time in real life. So we can change both of them to 0 0.35 and then change it or uh, hook this um, this output out to the output animation pose. We can then compile and save. And lastly, do not forget that you wanna click on each of your animations and make sure that you make the loop animation true for both of them. Once we do this, we want to go back into our first person map and we can press play. And if you crouch, you can see that you can automatic, you can go down and it's realistic and you move slowly. And obviously, of course you can change the height that you're crouched at, or you can change many different things. But in this case, you can see that we're crouched and we can look around. And if we let go of crouch, we will have a transition back to standing and it's not immediate, it's more realistic. Um, if we're sprinting, we can also go straight to crouch and it slows us down just like it would in real life. So if you're crouching, we still have footsteps. But one thing that I do wanna show you is that if we have a little, um, if we have a barrier on top, like so for example, if I make a cube and I make it a little bit bigger, out like so and if i want to crouch underneath it i can do so and there will be an automatic so if i go underneath i cannot stand up right now so i let go of c but there's no standing up it won't let me actually stand up so as soon as i walk out from a space like this it will automatically stand up and as you see it doesn't automatically go up it has a little bit of delay to it so same thing conversely if i walk underneath you can see that I cannot walk out, but as soon as I walk out like this, I, my head will not go into the block that's above it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was pretty short and um, I hope you guys think it looks realistic. Um, if you guys have any other ideas for tutorials or any other suggestions that you guys have, um, put them definitely in the comments below. And if you guys can like, subscribe, and I hope you guys have a good one. See you later.